Hi guys, so today I want to talk to you about what it was like for me to work for 90 days with Alex, a sport dietitian, okay? Uh, when I, in those 90 days, I went from 83 kilograms to 73 kilograms, less than 73 kilograms, which is one stone eight in old money. And I want to talk to you about the stuff that uh, I had that was difficult for me, where my starting point was, where my ending point was, the struggles, the wins, and just give you a sort of an overview of what it's like to work with a sports dietitian, okay? So, first things first, uh, who am I, where was I, where was my starting point? So, um, at my heaviest, I was over 17 stone, I was a dress size in 22. Um, I used to have to wear ankle supports to walk because I had a lot of uh, arthritic pain in my ankles and also my knees and my hips and things as well. Uh, life wasn't great. I knew I wanted to lose weight. I didn't really know how. So initially I tried Slimming World and I did actually lose a few stone on Slimming World. It took about three years, um, but I did manage to lose about three stone in the end. However, then I got to an age where perimenopause hit and nothing worked. Slimming World stopped working. I got well and truly stuck and well and truly disillusioned and I tried all sorts of things, some of which I've already talked about on videos. Apple cider vinegar was one, sticking patches on my skin was another, uh, oh gosh what else, fasting, that made me very hungry and very grumpy a lot of the time. Um, so basically I tried all sorts, nothing was working. I started going to a gym and started throwing myself into loads of cardio exercise and just nothing was working and I was so stuck and so disillusioned and so frustrated. Um, I was classed as obese on my BMI and I just felt old and fat and unhappy. And then on my Facebook one day up pops this Alex the Sport Dietitian guy. Didn't know who he was, very skeptical, thought he was probably some fly by night. Um, I looked at these before and after pictures that he had of these people that had worked with him and thought, yeah, well, they can't be real, can they? But then he was advertising himself as a registered dietitian. And I thought, well, if he is a registered dietitian, he has to be registered on the HCPC, okay, the professional code. They have a professional code of conduct. So I looked him up and there he was on the HCPC register and I thought okay so he can't be lying then because if he's lying he's in breach of his professional code of conduct. So I thought in for a penny in for a pound we'll have a call we'll find out more. So I had this call with Alex and I remember it so well it was lockdown it was the first lockdown I was sat in my garden um, I'd take myself out into my garden away from my kids and my partner and all the distractions so that I could concentrate on this call. And in that first um, few weeks of lockdown, I put on quite a few pounds, let's say, because I couldn't go out, couldn't do anything. The gym was closed. Um, so yeah, my weight was going this way, not, <laughs> not that way at that time. So um, he asked me all sorts of stuff. I told him where I was at, what I tried, why I was stuck. I said to him, if I lose a stone, I would be ecstatic, but I think it would be a miracle because I've tried all the things. And he said, you'll lose miles of a stone. And I said, don't be ridiculous. And he said, yes, you will. Let's just say he was right. Um, that call was quite hard hitting at times. He got me to think about things like, where would I be in five years if I carried on where I was going, bearing in mind my weight was going up at this point, um, and where I would be in five years if I continued to go up wasn't a good thought. Um, I'd be back to wearing the ankle supports, I'd be back to being in pain every day, I'd be back to not being able to walk up a flight of stairs, you know, and, and um, I wasn't prepared to do that. So I came off the call with Alex and I phoned my mum because my mum is my voice of reason. Um, and I spoke to my mum and my mum said, well, it sounds good. You know, all this support does sound good. It's like, you know, you've got support for life. It sounds very positive. Go for it, I'd say. So I did. I did and I signed up. So over the next 90 days, a lot changed, okay? I still, I still can't actually quite believe all the things that changed. So... I went from a die-hard night owl who hates mornings to a morning person. Um, I had a dog at this point in time, bless him, little Logie, um, and he woke me up every morning for, at five o'clock in the morning, 5, 5.30 for a wee. 
and every day I started the day going, oh, that dog, right? And during the course of these 90 days, I changed my mindset around that and I realised that I could view that 5.30 till everybody else getting up at 7.30 time as me time. And trust me, when you've got a husband and three children, me time, and you work full time, me time is a rarity. And uh, and so that, that 5.30 till 7.30, those two hours became became my little sanctuary of time, my little bubble of time. So that was a really um, big shift over the course of that uh, that first 90 days. Um, I also got a nutrition plan. I got an exercise plan that was actually personalised to me. And that was, uh, that was incredible, you know, to have a nutrition plan that said, that didn't have mince on it because I don't like mince. And I told them that, so it was taken off. You know, just little things like that makes a big difference, doesn't it, to how sustainable a, a plan is if it actually suits you, you know? Uh, and by the way, if you want to click on the link, okay, there's um, there's some information in there, which is like some of the stuff that I got when I was working with Alex and they'll send it through to you and they'll send it through to you. Honestly, the stuff is like, it's, it's really good and it works. I am a testimony to the fact that this works. I think Alex has worked, helped over 3,000 women now. You know, there's a, there's a lot of us. There's a whole tribe, the TSD tribe we are. Um, so honestly, have a little read, click on the link, have a little perusal. But anyway, I digress. I digress. Uh, that first three months of, um, of working with Alex, I think the biggest... The hardest thing that I had to go from was from being very, very sedentary to trying to get more steps in every day. So I worked full time, sat at a computer. I didn't walk hardly at all. I could quite comfortably get to the end of a working day and be on less than a thousand steps. Um, so to, it took me a long time to get to, to 10,000 a day, believe me, like a long time. Um, and it's all the little strategies that helped me to get there. There was this all this information, all this knowledge that I got, and not just from Alex as well, there's the inner circle, which is a, a group of, of people, a, a, the tribe, of everybody that's been working with Alex and works with the team. And honestly, if you've got a problem, one of them has been through it. And if you've got a, something you're struggling with, one of them has got a solution that worked for them that might not that might work for you. They're fantastic. They are so lovely and so supportive and so fantastic. And, you know, you've got like life log access to, to that resource and it's brilliant. So they came up with all these little strategies about it, it up in my steps. So um, marching on the spot while watching telly or boiling the kettle, uh, going out for a walk in the morning, walk to work in the morning, even though I don't work out I walk in my bedroom, walk to work, get out and walk around the block and then come back in the house. You know, little things like this help you to build up the steps. So that was um, that was a big shift for me was the steps thing. I've already mentioned the whole big shift from day to morning, per night person to morning person. Uh, that was a massive shift. Um, another thing that was really tricky for me was um, I like food. I don't think you end up as an overweight person if you don't like food. And I love food and I've got a big appetite, guys. I'm not going to lie about that. I have a big appetite. And one of the great things that I learned through all the education and learning was, was how to actually still have a plate full of food, but not and never feel hungry but have this plate full of food that was actually really, really good for me, that was in line with my uh, with my calorie goal, it was in line with my macro goal, because I understand now what macros are, who knew? Didn't even know that was a thing before. Um, so learning about all this stuff, and I can eat loads, and I was never hungry, and that made me very, very happy. I remember somebody saying once when I had to go, after COVID, when I had to go back into work, and somebody going, you must eat nothing now, you've lost so much weight, and I was like, oh no, no I eat like five, times a day and they were like no and I'm like oh yeah really three meals two snacks like every day <laughs> and they couldn't believe that I was eating that much stuff you know um exercise wise I mean for me I thought I'd be okay I thought I'd be okay with exercise because I've been chucking myself around all these cardio classes you see on the run-up to COVID in my to get over this plateau of not shifting the weight so I thought oh yeah exercise will be fine but it was a it, it was a big shift 
to go from thinking you have to do all this cardio to doing more resistance based stuff that was that was a really really big shift for me and bearing in mind there was no gyms so my equipment <laughs> was me puffy you know like what you put your foot your foot still for you that was it i didn't have a bench i had a i had a puffy i had a, a red resistance band and a two kilo two two kilogram dumbbells that was it and i was like yeah because this isn't gonna work is it this isn't gonna make any change this is exercise anyway totally changed my shape like totally changed my shape when they edit this i'm going to get them to put a picture in here of a before and afterwards this is what happened in 90 days i went from that to that mental with a two kilogram weight and a resistance band and a puffy instead of a <laughs> instead of a uh, instead of a workbench who knew so yeah that's some of the stuff the biggest difficulty that i had to get past was my own brain and I think that's the case with a lot of it, isn't it? You know, like when it comes to changing things, the, the biggest stumbling block is usually what goes on in here, like negative self-talk and that, you know, I was convinced that it wouldn't work. I was convinced that I would be the person that upset Alex's like track record and that I'd be the one that just stayed the same. Um, but honestly the reading the the mindset stuff the input from a psychologist the input from the coach and honestly if you've never been coached before be coach being coach is amazing it talk about the shifts in your mindset i took up journaling all these things and it really did change my change my life <laughs> change the way i think and change my life um yeah 90 days i worked that first started up and then I, and I remember if we I tracked everything for 90 days you see so I, I know what changed and I started off at the beginning of that 90 days as a fed up middle-aged woman who was wearing a size 16 in the clothes um who was felt very trapped by self-limiting beliefs I believed that I was destined to just get fatter now I was getting into perimenopause and then by the end of the 90 days i'd lost 18 centimeters off my waist 18 centimeters off my waist i'd lost over 10 kilograms over a stone and a half like in that first 90 days i'd gone from a dress size 16 to a dress size 10 to 12. i didn't think my bones could fit in a size 10 let alone with a bit of flesh on top of them it was it was amazing but not just that I wasn't fed up anymore. I felt empowered. I felt like anything was possible. Um, I was looking forward to the future with positivity and thinking, what can I do next? And I have to say, that's still the same now. My